In the early hours of August 27, 2006, Com Air Flight 5191 prepared for what should have been a routine takeoff from Lexington's Bluegrass Airport. The Bombardier CRJ100 had 50 people on board, ready for a quick hop to Atlanta. But as the aircraft started its takeoff roll, it veered onto the wrong runway, one that was far too short for a safe departure. Within seconds, the aircraft crashed and 49 lives were tragically lost. How did an experienced crew end up on the wrong runway? What went wrong during those crucial moments before takeoff? Today, we'll explore the flight files of Com Air Flight 5191. Hello everyone and welcome to The Flight Files. I'm your host Dan and today we are taking a look into Com Air Flight 5191. Before I get into the episode, if you enjoy the podcast and want to see more, head on over to theflightfiles.com and follow at The Flight Files on social media. Let's jump in. Com Air Flight 5191, operating as part of the Delta Connection, was scheduled for a short flight from Lexington, Kentucky to Atlanta, Georgia. The aircraft, a Bombardier CRJ-100, was a reliable twin-engine jet designed for regional flights. On board were 47 passengers and three crew members, including Captain Jeffrey Clay and First Officer James Pollenhint. Apologies if I'm not saying that, written, that name correctly. Captain Clay had accumulated over 4,500 flight hours, much of it in the CRJ-100. With years of experience, he was known as a skilled and capable pilot. First Officer Pollenhink, who was flying the aircraft that morning, had more experience with over 6,500 flight hours, though he had fewer hours on the CRJ-100. Despite this, both pilots were well versed in the aircraft and familiar with its operation. Bluegrass Airport is a regional hub serving Lexington, and it has two runways, the 7,000 foot runway 22, designed for commercial aircraft like the CRJ-100 and the much shorter 3500 foot runway 26 meant for smaller planes. While runway 22 is standard for takeoffs, early morning conditions, low light and reduced visibility would soon play a role in the tragic mistake that unfolded. The weather that morning was clear but the pre-dawn light was dim making it more difficult for the crew to distinguish between the two runways. Everything about this flight seemed routine but the confusion during those early morning hours was about to turn catastrophic. As the crew of Com Air Flight 5191 prepared for takeoff, they taxied the aircraft onto what they believed was runway 22. However, instead of lining up on the correct runway, the plane was actually positioned on runway 26, a much shorter runway not suited for commercial jets like the CRJ-100. With only 3,500 feet of runway available, the aircraft didn't have enough distance to reach the necessary speed for takeoff, which would be V1. But neither Captain Clay nor First Officer Pollenhint noticed that they were on the wrong runway. They had gone through their pre flight checks and were cleared for takeoff by ATC, but due to miscommunication and low visibility, the critical mistake went unnoticed. As Flight 5191 began its takeoff roll, it quickly became clear that something was wrong. The aircraft couldn't gain enough speed and was rapidly approaching the end of the runway. Just seconds before the plane ran out of tarmac, Captain Clay realised the critical error and exclaimed, Oh no! But by then, it was too late. The CRJ-100 sped off the end of the runway, crashed through a perimeter fence and collided with trees just beyond the airport. The impact was devastating. The aircraft burst into flames almost immediately and tragically, 49 of the 50 people on board were killed. The sole survivor, First Officer Pollenhint, was pulled from the wreckage by rescue teams but suffered life-threatening injuries, leaving him unable to remember the events leading up to the crash. Emergency responders arrived quickly but the intense fire and impact left little hope for those trapped inside. In the aftermath, it became clear that the crew's decision to take off from the wrong runway had turned a routine flight into one of the deadliest aviation accidents in recent US history. Following the crash, the National Transportation Safety Board, or the NTSB, launched a thorough investigation into what went wrong on that early August morning. The focus quickly turned 
to the pilot's actions during taxiing and takeoff. How did two experienced pilots end up on the wrong runway without noticing? One key finding was the lack of communication between the pilots during taxiing. While the crew completed their pre-flight checks as expected, they engaged in casual conversation while navigating the taxiways. A crucial time for focus and attention. This lapse in concentration likely contributed to their failure to recognise they were on the wrong runway. In aviation, cockpit resource management or CRM is essential, particularly in critical phases like takeoff and landing. The investigation revealed that the casual chatter between Captain Clay and First Officer Pollenhink may have distracted them from verifying their position. They were cleared for takeoff, but they failed to double check that they were on the correct runway. The layer of Bluegrass Airport was also found to be a contributing factor. The runway lights for runway 22, the correct runway, were turned off for maintenance, making it more difficult for the crew to visually confirm their location. Additionally, runway 26, which they mistakenly used, was poorly marked and had minimal lighting, making it even harder to distinguish between the two runways in the dim morning light. Air traffic control played a role as well. The controller on duty cleared flight 5191 for takeoff, but did not visually confirm the aircraft's position. At smaller airports like Bluegrass, controllers often rely on verbal communication with pilots, assuming they are where they should be. Unfortunately, this assumption proved fatal. In its final report, the NTSB concluded that the primary cause of the crash was pilot error, particularly their failure to verify their location before takeoff. Contributing factors included poor cockpit communication, the airport's insufficient lighting and signage, and a lack of visual confirmation from air traffic control. The crash prompted several important changes. The NTSB recommended stricter communication protocols in the cockpit, particularly during taxiing and takeoff. Airports were urged to improve runway lighting and signage, especially at smaller airports, and air traffic controllers were advised to implement strict procedures for verifying aircraft positions before takeoff clearances are granted. The crash of Comair Flight 5191 brought critical issues in human factors and airport safety into sharp focus. One of the most significant takeaways from this tragedy is the role of distraction in the cockpit. Even experienced pilots are vulnerable to lapses in concentration, especially when performing what they might consider routine tasks. The casual conversation between Captain Clay and First Officer Pollenhink during taxiing took their attention away from ensuring they were on the correct runway. In aviation, there is a constant need to balance technology and human oversight. While modern aircraft are equipped with advanced systems to assist pilots, the human element, vigilance, communication and situational awareness remains vital. In the case of Flight 5191, everything on the aircraft itself was functioning properly, yet human error led to a fatal outcome. This crash reinforced the need for continuous crew resource management training, emphasising that even during routine operations, pilots must remain focused and alert. Another major issue was airport design and infrastructure, particularly at smaller regional airports like Bluegrass. The fact that the longer commercial runway had its light turned off due to maintenance, combined with the poor lighting on runway 26, created a dangerous environment for any pilot unfamiliar with the airport. This incident spurred improvements in runway lighting and signage standards across the industry, especially at airports surfing both general aviation and commercial traffic. The investigation also shed light on the role of air traffic control procedures. At smaller airports, controllers may not always have a clear line of sight to all runways. This case emphasised the importance of having stricter protocols in place for confirming aircraft positions before clearing them for takeoff. Ultimately, the crash of Flight 5191 serves as a reminder that even small mistakes can lead to catastrophic results. In this case, a brief lapse in attention during taxiing set off a chain of events that cost 49 lives. The tragedy of Comair Flight 5191 is a stark reminder that small errors like lining up on the wrong runway can have catastrophic consequences, even for the most experienced pilots. Thanks to the lessons learned from this accident, improvements have been made to cockpit communication protocols, airport infrastructure and ATC procedures, all aimed at preventing another accident like this from happening. 
Thank you for joining us as we explored the flight files of Com Air Flight 5191. This is a much shorter episode, just wanted to keep it sort of brief and concise and give you the top line details, but longer episodes are coming in the future. If you find this episode insightful, don't forget to follow and subscribe on your favourite podcast platform to stay updated on future episodes as we continue to explore the flight files of the aviation industry.